The objective of this video is going to be setting the camera view when the user list fragment comes into view. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean so that you get a good understanding. So on the right hand side is the completed version of the application and on the left hand side is the version that uh, the current video that we're at. So let's take a look at what happens when we navigate to the user list fragment in the uh, current version of the app. So I'm going to go to the user list fragment and here you can see that the map comes into view but it doesn't center on where the user is, where the authenticated user is, which in my case is where the blue dot is. So let's see what happens when we do it on the completed version. So I'll join a chat room and I'll go to the user list and you can see it centers on that user uh, where they actually are on their GPS coordinates. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So to start off we're going to go to open the user list fragment and we need to create a couple new objects. So I'm scrolling up to the very top of the file and I'm going to create a couple new objects. The first one is a Google Map object, so we'll, and we'll call it Google Map. The second object is going to be a latitude and longitude boundary object. So lat, long, bounds is what you want, and I'm going to call it mmap boundary. This is going to help us set the boundary for what the camera view is looking at. And the last object is going to be the user's position, so we'll call it, uh, user, there'll be a user location object, I'm going to call it m user position. This is going to be the position of the authenticated user. Now to get started, the first thing we need to do is actually set the Google Map object to our map. So I'm going to delete these comments, we don't need those. And inside the onMapReady method, I'm going to go mGoogleMap equals map. That way we have a reference to the Google Map that has been set up using the onMapReady method. Now we need to actually set the user's position. So if you remember from what we declared at the top here, we have the Google Map, the lat long bounds, and we have the user position. The user position is the position of the authenticated user. So we need a method to actually set that. So I'm going to scroll down just below on create view here, and I'm going to create a method named, I'm going to create a void method named set user position. It's going to take nothing and it will return nothing. Now the objective of this method is to, we have to loop through all the, the user positions. So if we look up to our on create method, we have all of the user locations. We want to loop through them, figure out which user is the authenticated user, and then set that to the position, to the variable. So we're going to loop through all the, all the user positions. So user location, user location, and we're going to loop through all the user locations. And then we're going to say if uh, user location dot get user, get user ID, and then if that equals the authenticated user, so get instance, get UID, then we know we have a match. So in that case, we go user position equals user location. And there we go. That's going to set the user location for the authenticated user. And we want to call this method in on create. So um, well, we can actually delete this loop too. We don't need this loop anymore. That was just for debugging to see if everything was working. So I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to call set user position. Now that we have the user position, we have a reference to the Google map. We can uh, start working on a method to set the camera view. So I'm going to create another new method. It's going to take nothing and return nothing. I'm going to call it set camera view. And this is where we're going to actually set the camera view. So the first thing is we need to set up the boundary. We need to figure out where the bounds are for the camera. Because remember, um, if we look at the set, if we look at the move camera method, which we call on the Google map, it takes a, what does it take? It takes a camera update object. And this is what a camera update object looks like. So I'm going to go camera update factory dot new lat long bounds. This accepts, let me see, it says multiple implementations. So I'm holding down control here. And I'm going to click on it. And you can see there's a couple options here. We're going to select the first one, which accepts a lat long bounds object and an integer object. The integer is, I'm going to say, whoops, I don't want to look at this. Uh, the integer is actually the, the zoom level. So in our case, we're going to use a zero zoom level. So you don't actually need to click that. That's just to show you what it accepts. Uh, so this is where we're actually going to put our map boundary and we want to put a zoom level of zero. Uh, but before we set that, obviously, we need to set something to our map boundary because right now the map boundary is essentially null. So essentially what we want to do when we set up the map boundary is we want to define the, the top right corner and the bottom left corner. Um, let me, I'm trying to think of a way to graphically show you. The only way is for me to actually probably draw on the screen. So let me uh, open up a Google map here. So this is the area where I live. I'll take, I'll use the snipping tool to do a demonstration. So I'm going to take a shot. Suppose that I wanted the boundary to be, 
here. This is what where's this is where I wanted it to zoom in. Um, that's kind of small. Let's make it bigger. Whoops. Suppose this is where I wanted to zoom. The what we want to do is we want to define a point for this a a point for this and a point for these two corners. If we have that information, then we essentially know what the view window is. Assuming that this is a square or a rectangle, then you then you know. All you need to know is this point and this point. So that's what we're going to do with our map boundary. We're going to define what this point is and what this point is. We need to declare a couple new variables. The first one will be the bottom boundary. So we'll go m user position dot get geo point, and then we'll do get latitude, and that can be kind of the starting point for our bottom boundary. And then we want to have the the left boundary. M user position get geo point get longitude. Uh, and let me just uh, talk about where those are. So this is going to be the bottom and the left. What that would mean in our picture here is the bottom would be kind of this point going down to here. That was a terrible drawn arrow. And the left would be the distance from here to here. So if you imagine this as an axis, this is a terrible, terrible diagram. But if you imagine this as an X and Y axis like this, so X goes that way and Y goes that way. Um, the left boundary is the distance from the y-axis to where our point is, and the bottom boundary is the distance from the top to, uh, it's basically the distance down. And then, so, and then likewise, the right is going to be the distance on this side, and then the top, I'm sure you get the idea. So that's, that's kind of how this is all defined. Uh, then the top, so let's do the top boundary, m user position, get geo point, get latitude and we'll do double right boundary m user whoops m user position get geo point get longitude so you can obviously see that a couple of these are exactly the same the bottom boundary right now is currently the exact same as the top boundary and the left boundary is the same as the right boundary so that obviously doesn't make sense we need to create some kind of a rectangular view so to create kind of a little bit of space what i'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 0.1 of a uh, GPS coordinate from this one. I'm going to subtract 0.1 from that one. And then on the other two, I'm going to add them, so 0.1. So that's going to give an overall difference of 0.2 on either side. So because I'm subtracting 0.1 from this and I'm adding 0.1 to this, that gives you a difference of 0.2. So the GPS coordinates will be 0.2 apart from each other. And it's the same thing with this one, so point, point, uh 0.1 and 0.1. So overall, our overall area that the view window is going to occupy would be 0.2 times 0.2. That would be the area. So the overall map boundary, the, the area that the boundary occupies would be this. It would be, um, so overall map, I guess map view window is a better way to put it. Um, that would be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. This is the area that it occupies, which would be 0 0.04. So if we were to look at the map, um, so this area, so like this distance from here to here is 0 0.2. And then at the same time, this side, same thing, same distance, 0 0.2. <laughs> that diagram is terrible, but you probably get the idea of what I'm saying. Uh, so that's, that's how we decide where our view window is. So now we need to actually create the map boundary object. So I'm going to go map boundary equals new lat long bounds and inside here this takes two lat long bounds objects so one is going to be for the bottom left corner and one's going to be for the for the top right corner so i'm going to go so new lat long new lat long and put the bottom boundary and then put the left boundary and then new lat long equals the uh, top boundary and then the right boundary so that's it that's it has it's a boundary that's uh, described by two points, the bottom left and the bottom and the top right, and then you pass that to the camera and everything is good. So now the next question is where do we call this method? The best place to call it is right when the Google Map is set. So right here. So right after the map is set uh, in the on map ready method, we want to set the camera view so the user is directed to that view immediately. Now I'm going to run it and we can take a look. All right, I'll join one of the chat rooms and I'll go to the user list fragment and then you can see the view window is set to where the authenticated user is. So 
right now we just have kind of a plane that's just the plane marker that is shown for where my location is now we need to work on actually putting markers on the map for everybody who's in the chat room and also putting markers for the authenticated user so that's what we're going to work on in the next couple of videos